Hey everyone, what's going on? Joey Contino here, and currently I'm in Ocean City, New Jersey, here at 6th Street, because behind me is Gillian's Wonderland Pier, and unfortunately, in a few weeks, this thing will be closed for good. So I figured, let's quickly get up there, film a little walkthrough video, that way we have it for the Wildwood Video Archive. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe, you turn on notifications, and you give this video a thumbs up. A special thank you out to my Patreon, the Patreon.com. It's because of them I can literally in the middle of the day stop everything and film videos like this. If you want to support this channel and have your name at the end of the video, all you have to do is click the links in the description below. Anyway, let's get started. Before we jump inside, there are a few things I wanted to go over. At this very moment, we still have no idea what is going to happen to this property. You see, the mayor, Jay Gillian, who actually has been owning this, he's, I forget, I think second or third generation owning this, he announced just a few weeks ago that indeed this right here needs to shut down because it's not viable anymore or it's not profitable anymore. And interestingly enough, when asked about what will happen here, he says he doesn't know because he doesn't own the property. This made people ask, wait a minute, then who owns the pier? Well, if you remember a few years ago, they defaulted on their loans, and so someone stepped in to go ahead and relieve them. That was Eustace Mika. Eustace, you may know that name, he owns the Icona brands pretty much all in South Jersey. He's got a couple in Cape May, he's actually trying to build another one in Cape May. He's got one in Diamond Beach, he's trying to build another one in Wildwood, he's got one in Stone Harbor, etc. He has built a massive, massive, I would say, luxury resort kind of theme here in South Jersey. You may also remember him because about a year ago, he went to the Ocean City City Council to propose a massive hotel here on the boardwalk in which a lot of people were not happy about and that application kind of just disappeared. And so he is the one that currently owns all of this behind us. This front, the rides behind it, and of course the famous pizza place on the corner. According to him, when it comes to the end of the year, they're going to do studies and surveys to see if keeping this an amusement park is viable or tearing it down and doing something else with it, which is the most dreaded thing that every single person, I don't care what short town you're in, whether it's Cape May, Wildwood, Stone Harbor, Avalon, or even Atlantic City, condos. I know, you don't like condos, I don't like co condos. We like hotels, more units, more people down here. But over the past, I would say 10 years, we've seen so many condos go up. We lost a lot of small businesses, a lot of great restaurants and amusement parks. And I don't think we can afford to lose yet another one on the Jersey Shore. And there's a lot of people that want to see this thing saved. Heck, there's even an online group right now which is Save the Ferris Wheel. And I mean, you have to look at it from a tourism kind of background. This Ferris wheel, you can see all the way off the island as you're driving down or up the Garden State Parkway. Why would you want to get rid of that massive billboard that screams, we're a fun place, bring your family and have a great time? And I really don't want to get critical of Icona because they do a lot of great things. They bring back a lot of great properties, but to remove something like this would be something really bad in the public eye. So. I'm hoping for their sake and our sake, they decide to keep this an amusement park, even if they scale it down a little bit, maybe do something with it. I mean, they are potentially the ones with the debt, unless they hold the debt. We don't even know the whole financial situation at this time. All that being said, I talked your ear off enough. Let's go ahead, head inside, walk around, and maybe put the seagull in the sky. For those who maybe have never came here, this place has been around for 94 years, which is insane to think about. And in doing so, They've created a lot of memories for families. I mean, even a little Joey during the winter time used to come down here for the first night out where this would be closed off and that side would be closed off and you could ride all the rides inside, which was always a lot of fun. And before we go inside, let's go ahead and just enjoy the facade of the building. You've got a dinosaur coming out here, someone's waving. You've got these Wonderland signs that spin. Very iconic thing from the 60s and the 50s. Wildwood used to have something like this for some of their rides and attractions. And now, let's go ahead and head inside. Probably going to start at the carousel, kind of zigzag through here before making our way out back. You will also notice murals on the outside. Humpty Dumpty, got Jack and the Beanstalk, all Wonderland themed stuff. And they kept that theme up pretty well, even with their historic carousel in here. And this thing, you could tell, 
is beautiful, and at least it has been beautiful. It's been a while since it's been restored, but it is so nice looking. Look at that woodwork and the design in the back. As you walk around, you've got a carousel in the corner. You've got an area for custom t-shirts and hats. Here's a little monkey band, which is not running at this very moment because you gotta pay for it. I don't think it's even plugged in. This court has been empty for a little bit so they put tables and chairs, but we got mirrors up on the wall, sunrise, and I can't tell if those are supposed to be babies flying. Oh, we got the monorail going around. You can see the whole fairy tale kind of aspect in here. And I have to add, I came on a random midday at like the moment they open, and surprisingly enough, it's actually pretty packed. I'm assuming it's because everyone and their mother has all these tickets they want to use up before they close for good. We've got the submarine, the cool ride. And we'll get to the outside in a little bit. Some of the rides are already, I can't tell if they're shut down or if they're just not operating at the moment. Because you've got the rock and roll over here with no, uh, no one at it. You've got this one here with no one at it. But it could just be that it's early in the day. In the middle, we've got the fire trucks, which are one of the most original things ever. I mean, look at the original metalwork. These things are made out of wood. Some of it's made out of metal. It's like a cool combination. They all get their own names as Gavin. I have no idea what this one's name, but how neat. Oh, that's called a Wonder Sub. That's pretty cool. I wonder if that's custom for here. Moving backwards, we've got the boats over here. We've got frogs over there. These are old-fashioned cars, which I believe at one point Maurice Pierce had something very similar to this. I think this is like a 90s ride. Actually, wait, I could probably zoom in on the actual information if I can read it. No, that's kind of a... Uh, oh, is this a 1971? Well, I was wrong on that one, huh? And with the exception of the monorail, which goes around the entire property and you line up right up there, this side is mostly just arcade games and claw machine games. You've got some virtual reality games, you've got basketball, <laughs> down the clown, <laughs> that's kind of cool. You've got skee-ball, a different kind of snow slots. Look at this one here. They call it the beanbag toss. That's pretty, pretty much what it is. It describes it very well. There's a big claw machine here. Got a roller coaster simulator. You've got this really cool dodgeball game. This is unique. I've never seen this one before. And you've got more games going this way. King Kong of Skull Island. Space Invaders, which was always fun playing growing up. And then over here is the entrance to the 6th Street Pizza and Grill, which you can see inside. The lunch crowds are starting to come in. You smell it from here, it smells good. Now let's head up these steps here to give you a different view of the entire property on the inside. Because a lot of people don't realize you come up here and take your photos. And a lot of families come here and then I always say to them, hey, you guys should want to go upstairs, take a family photo. It's the best place to do it. You don't want to go on the ride. But let me show you this view, ready? How cool is this view, right? Overlooking everything. And then you have the monorail going around. And of course, you have to come and see the free show, man. These animatronics have been here for quite some time. And it's things like that that I want to have on film. So that way, generations from now can come back and be like, hey, do you remember the animatronics that were in there? And they go, no, and they go, well, here's a video. Check it out. Anyway, so that is the full inside tour. Now we're going to make our way out back. And here we are out back. It is such a beautiful day. 
go ahead and start here on the right hand side of the park make our way out which while we're here let's go ahead and document how much everything costs you can see one ticket one dollar twenty five dollars gives you twenty seven fifty for fifty five one hundred for one fifteen and two hundred for two fifty and so you can grab tickets and go on every single ride you know new jersey is very rare in the case that there's a lot of amusement parks where you can kind of just go right in and walk around and watch your kids in other places you gotta have a you know kind of a turnstile to get in you pay even if you're not going on the rides here you pay per ticket per ride and this sign kind of shows you how much everything's going to be so you know one for one so you say over here it's four credits so if you buy them one for one it's four dollars versus if you buy the bigger package it's you know cheaper than four dollars and that goes down the entire way with it looks like the log flume probably one of the better rides over here on today because it's so hot out it would cost you just under six dollars if you bought the big package or if you do individually six dollars which i am totally not gonna lie to you that is stupid cheap i don't know why they decided to go with cheap pricing like that compared to Maury's Piers, i think it's like a dollar and a quarter don't quote me on that but you know i'm surprised those tickets are so low in price like that should have been at least six tickets minimum for everything and then one additional for everyone after that I think maybe he knew this summer that this was going to be it. So he just said, you know what? Keep the prices the same and let everyone have some fun. We're going to walk by the Raiders first. It always made me wonder how they got the permission for some of these things because that is clearly an IP. But then again, they only just call it Raiders. If you know what I mean? Over here we have the old fashioned roller coaster, which some of these don't even have names for them. Like listed out front. You only can find it on the other side. This one I know is called the Wacky Worm. I think it's the same name for every single amusement park. Oh, they have it right there in the bottom. Over here, you've got a glass house, which I bang my head in a lot. That's not a lot of fun. We've got the Kite Flyer, which is operating right now, but I will tell you, there's no one in line. Smack dab, not in the middle, but on the right-hand side middle. You've got the Ferris Wheel. This is the wheel that everyone wants to save. As we're going around, you can see the monorail how it kind of weaves in and out of everywhere. It's gonna go over us in a second. You've got the fun slide, the wave swinger, the motorcycles, which once again, IP. How do they get the IP for these? The Simpsons, you got Shrek. We have the balloon race. Not open right now. Get the flying elephants. Why is no one flying? Come on, pull up! I guess they don't want to fly up just yet. There's a wave swinger. This is where things kind of split in half. You have to go down a ramp to get to the other side. Now, they have a really cool dark ride here. And I don't think they're open right now. Actually, they are open. I kind of want to go on it because this one's, it's pretty cool. Take a look at this, right? It is spooky looking. If they're going to sell this, can I please suggest Morty's Beers to buy it? I think it's a pretty cool one. If no one's here, ring bell. If no one comes, no one's here. Do you see that sign? That is pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Look at him trying to climb up the roof. We are going to head just south to get the speedway. It's kind of cool. Look at this. They put a whole thing for Roy on here. You see that? That is so sweet. Ocean City car. These are all sponsored. Wet and wild. Down here is where the mini golf is, and it does not look like it's open at this time. You can see their courses though. I like the SpongeBob one. You've got a pirate, that's not a pyron, what do you even call him? Are they trolls? They may be trolls. You have a mermaid, a giant lobster, an anchor, and then down there a crab. And of course a park is not complete if they don't have a total world, which is right here. But the one thing that I'm sure that everyone really loves the most here is the live pool located just under here. This was a lot of fun. You get pretty wet. You load on this platform before going behind the shot, going all the way up. 
taking kind of like a U-turn and going right down this way. Another one should be coming any second. Here we go. Oh, there was no one in it. There was no one in it. Everyone's favorite ride when it's hot out is this. I'm actually surprised it's not too big of a line just because of how hot it is. And this one also has a Western theme. You can see an Indian on a horse. See Canyon Tours, which I mean involves this right here. Woo! All the way down. Which I was hoping another would come down, but it's uh, no one coming down right now. And then the final ride here, the Moby Dick, which is a favorite, especially down over at Maury's Piers. And I believe there's another one on Steel Pier. Don't quote me on that. The one ride that I really wanted to share with you guys is of course the Frisbee, which is the most extreme ride here. And they're not open today, which is really sad because I totally would have ridden that one. It's a fun one. Gives you butterflies. Now that I shared with you guys what everything looks like from the ground, let's put the seagull in the sky to give you a bird's point of view of what everything looks like here. So there you guys go. That is Gillian's Wonderland here in Ocean City, New Jersey, or at least now we could say was Gillian's Wonderland here in Ocean City, New Jersey. Let me know what you guys think should happen here in this area in the comment section below. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. I'm Joe, and as always, I'll see you on the beach, which is right over there. I'll see you later. Bye.